YMT, Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. We begin tonight with the number of coronavirus cases surging in states across the U.S. More than 12,000 people have now tested positive, and the death toll from COVID-19 keeps growing as well. Experts say those grim numbers will only go up as more people are tested. CBS's Skylar Henry reports from the White House. President Trump said there may be a glimmer of hope in the fight against the coronavirus. I think it could be a game changer. On Thursday, the president announced that two existing medications had been identified as potential COVID-19 treatments. One is an experimental Ebola drug. The other, hydroxychloroquine, was developed to treat malaria, but has been used as an arthritis medicine since the 1950s. It's been around for a long time, so we know that if it if, if things don't go as uh, planned, it's not going to kill anybody. Both drugs are now being tested in clinical trials. If they're effective, Mr. Trump says they will be fast-tracked for FDA approval. Optimism was in short supply elsewhere. The State Department issued a rare level four advisory, telling U.S. citizens they should avoid traveling outside the country. Those already overseas are urged to return at once. The number of coronavirus deaths in Italy now surpasses the total in China, where the virus emerged late last year. Chinese authorities, meanwhile, reported no new infections on Thursday, the first time that's happened since the outbreak began. The federal response to the coronavirus crisis continues to be hampered by shortages of medical equipment and supplies. There's not enough testing available right now to meet demand. The good news is that here they're starting up. This pandemic continues to wreak havoc on the world's financial markets. The Dow saw a modest gain Thursday, but economists are bracing for a potentially unprecedented surge in the number of people applying for unemployment benefits. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says his state could run out of some critical medical supplies by the end of the month. And late word tonight that California's governor has issued a statewide order for people to stay at home. Back in the bluegrass, officials still work to contain the spread of the virus with thousands of businesses forced to shut down and schools closing their doors. Many Kentuckians are self-isolating at home. Today, Governor Andy Bashir announced the state's second death in Jefferson County, along with 12 new cases. One of those new cases is the first in the WIMT viewing area. A 59-year-old woman in Pulaski County tested positive for the virus. We are told Pulaski County officials have scheduled a news conference for tomorrow at noon to talk more about that case. The state of Tennessee announced more than 50 new cases of coronavirus in the last 24 hours. This map shows affected areas. There are now 156 confirmed coronavirus cases in the volunteer state. Yesterday, there were just 101. The yellow areas are counties that were already dealing with COVID-19 cases, while the red areas show five new counties reporting positive tests. Nashville and its suburbs remain the epicenter for the outbreak, making up 113 of those cases. As we see more cases pop up across Kentucky and more tests done across the region, those who have compromised immune systems are on edge. WIMT's Connor James spoke to one woman who is essentially living in quarantine, so she will not get the virus. Um, at first, I didn't think that it was a big deal. Crystal Combs is immunosuppressed. She had a volvulus. In short, she lost all of her small intestine and most of her large. For 293 days, all her food was through an IV. It's been a headache trying to avoid this virus and getting everything moved. In late 2016, she received an organ donation and she's better now. She's recently moved into this home in Hindman and lives with her boyfriend and his two kids. But no one but them comes in or out. If I catch this, it's more than likely going to be a death sentence. Even though there's not much data right now, for you all tr trying to figure your way out through this, you know, with that uncertainty, what's that been like for you all? Um, it's really scary because, I mean, they tell you 
once you have a transplant, you have no immune system, basically. You have a little bit, but not enough to fight anything off. Cleaning and disinfecting is done around the clock. An advocate of organ donation, she wants people to know transplant recipients and those that are elderly or have compromised immune systems need more help than ever. Check on them. Make sure that they have the supplies that they need, cleaning supplies. With four in the house, her boyfriend Nathan and the two kids, they're doing something many of us are, adjusting to a new way of life. And you know, just like I said, we have never lived in this lifestyle, so you know, it's just something new to all of us. But it's an effort they're doing together. They, they've been amazing, they really have. They've helped more than they'll ever know. In Perry County, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. Crystal says she wants to make sure people do not hoard items. She needed disinfectant, something crucial to her, and most shelves were empty. And she asked that you take only what you need and do not stockpile. As the economic impact of the coronavirus spreads, unemployment claims have soared to their highest level since 2017. There are reports of state unemployment websites, including Kentucky's, crashing as people rush to file claims nationwide. The Labor Department reported Thursday that applications for benefits jumped by 70,000 to 281,000 last week, the highest one-week increase since 1992. Analysts say the surge likely underestimates the true number of unemployed workers. This is something we've never faced before, the coronavirus like this. How are you going to survive? <laughs> are you going to pay your bills? Um, how long? The Labor Department report cited increased layoffs in the accommodation, food services, transportation, and warehouse industries. Saw a little bit of rain today, saw a little bit of some sun and those warmer temperatures. So definitely feeling like a spring day out there. We'll go ahead and take you up to a few of those cameras looking along Interstate 64 in Moorhead. They've dried out quite nicely and continue to see those drier conditions as we head into tonight. Interstate 75 over into Mount Vernon seeing really much of the same story and it's pretty warm out there. Upper 60s to lower 70s. Really won't see those temperatures drop too much as we head into tonight, but by the time we get into tomorrow, we are going to see a cold front move in, which means cooler air and even some showers and storm. Wind speeds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour, but these will continue to pick up, especially as we head throughout the overnight hours and that cold front get inches closer to us here in the mountains. As we look at this hour by hour, mostly cloudy skies, a few showers start to move in in the early morning hours, and then we could even see some scattered storms tomorrow morning. Temperatures still into about those lower 70s for highs tomorrow, but we'll drop those temperatures quickly as we head into the weekend. I'll have your weekend forecast coming up in a little bit. Thank you, Paige. Baptist Health in Corbin has postponed elective surgeries for at least 30 days. That decision was made by the American College of Surgeons, the U.S. Surgeon General, and Governor Andy Bashir. The reason was to conserve medical supplies and hospital resources. Another, to continue social distancing as the number of cases across the nation continues to go up. Not only are stores and restaurants making adjustments with new guidelines surrounding the coronavirus, one medical facility is trying to cater to their patients, too. Primary Care and Hazard implemented the idea of a drive through clinic. It is a tent set up outside where you can literally drive your car under and be seen. This is to prevent higher risk patients from having to go inside the actual clinic. A nurse practitioner says this is a great way to see patients that are not really that sick. We can refill their, the patient's medications. If they need lab work, we have an area that we can pull them over here in the parking lot. We have several spaces reserved and lab will come out and draw their labs while they're here. The average visit at the drive through clinic is 10 to 12 minutes. If you would like to make an appointment at the drive through clinic, you can call primary care. Today, the Perry County Fiscal Court urged everyone to use social distancing at the Perry County Park. They say if there continues to be social gatherings of more than five people, they will be forced to lock the gates, remove basketball goals, and whatever it takes to prevent COVID-19 from spreading. They still urge people to use the park for a break but to do so responsibly. More COVID-19 tests are coming back because more labs are performing them. In Northern Kentucky, Gravity Diagnostics is a small private lab that started testing Monday. They received their FDA approval and spent nearly $500,000 to get the equipment to do the job. 
Now they are seeing their test load rise by the day. Um, and so we're really trying to be careful. Uh, the most important thing that viewers need to know is, you know, we need to make sure we honor the turnaround time required, right? So if we get a really a sample in, we want to make sure we get that result back to that medical professional or that patient uh, as soon as possible, right? Due to HIPAA restrictions, they cannot release how many positive tests they've had. Park rangers in Bell County hope closings give visitors a time to reflect. The Cumberland Gap National Historical Park announced Wednesday that the visitor center and campground would be closed amid COVID-19 recommendations. While the Pinnacle Overlook and trails are still open, rangers say they hope the change in pace will allow visitors to appreciate things that are often overlooked during their time at the park. Again, I think it's just uh, really reflecting on what's important in life and that this is an opportunity for the entire world to come together. Rangers ask that if you are planning to be in the park, that you continue to practice social distancing if you run into anyone. A big part of choosing a college is touring the campus, but now high school seniors are trying to figure out how to make their college decision as the coronavirus is shutting down campuses. WIMT's Emily Bennett shows us how Alice Lloyd College in Knott County is still giving tours. College visits typically start as a prospective student steps on campus. But now, Alice Lloyd College is doing things a little differently. Are you able to see my screen? Mary Turner is taking students on a virtual tour. It'll be just like you are when you come to campus. Uh, I'm going to walk you through a dorm presentation, let you see a little bit of campus. Using the Zoom application. And that's something we can see them, they can see us, I can show PowerPoints. So it's really virtually that they're sitting in front of me. Even having face-to-face -face interviews. Gage, what are you interested in majoring in? What do you want to pursue? Um, currently, I'm planning on going as a biology major so I can go on to be a physical therapist giving seniors a sigh of relief as their senior year is being cut short. It's just been kind of swept away from us here at the end. Making college visits one last worry. It's definitely been unnerving. It's been something we wouldn't have expected. But to know that people here are willing to work with you in this time of certainty, it's definitely been comforting. Hoping their college decision is something they can still be excited about. In Knott County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. To schedule a virtual visit, you can call Alice College at 606-368-6146. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, more and more local businesses switch to drive through only. How one local business is still working to keep your clothes clean. And it's not just businesses using drive throughs but government buildings as well. We'll take you to one Eastern Kentucky County where officials are trying to keep their operations running as smooth as possible. And showers and storms move back in tomorrow as the cold front moves through. We'll break down the timing and impacts coming up.